So welcome Habibi with another reaction with the second part of Andrew Tate in fresh and, in fresh and fit sorry fresh and fit uh, We're gonna see the second part if they have anything news they gonna speak about it But first we go uh, bef Before we go to the video and check what they're gonna say uh, as new for us because in the first part That was nothing new for me. So we're gonna see the second part if there is any new in it Make sure to check the store guys i'm gonna leave it in the description you're gonna check it you're gonna buy something from there you're gonna purchase it and as a support for us guys i really appreciate your support uh, i'm gonna drop the video to see what kind of design i have and i'm dropping every day new design so i'm busy all the i'm busy every day I, every day i'm thinking of a design and i'm thinking of a video to do so make sure to check them guys and make sure to check also the store and to subscribe as i said guys this is a store make sure to check it i have cool new cool design here and i'm dropping every day new design as you see the majestic is my it's not my favorite but i like it it's a hippie cat my favorite is the the wolf the hunter fearless yeah and you can see it from back from front and this one I put it only in the back in the in the front the woman studying there is a reflection for it as you can see i'm dropping every day uh, design you may find something you really like freedom yeah like this one i lost my boo see this one is also i i like it but my favorite one is also this one the dream catcher the fox between the four the wolf and the fox i i pretty enjoy them both uh, this is my favorite design so far the fox and this one yeah and i have we have cool design also so you can check dark dark vador yeah the cats yeah you can check be simple be creative seek so yeah make sure to check and uh, to purchase something from here guys as a support for us i really appreciate it guys and if you want to see me doing more reaction make sure to purchase something from here guys see ya thank you see you for the second part Let's go. we've been in romania for a couple of days now um last time we came here it was amazing we did so much stuff obviously things have changed now what's up with you now what's the plan i don't leave the house bro at all no if you want to go clubbing get girls have fun go to nice restaurants Tristan. i'll give you a nice list of places to go <laughs> i'll send you with my bodyguards they're strapped you're fine uh -huh. and you can go have a great time i don't leave my house unless i have to my barber comes here my food comes here my shisha comes here my cigars come here my wives come here i stay in my house because in my house there's a big gate and there's four dudes with guns and then there's a bulletproof door two of them and then there's me i'm strapped everything's fine my life is is extreme enough I had someone say to me the other day, we were discussing swimming with sharks. And I was saying, that's white people shit. No way. <laughs> and they were saying, oh, but in the Maldives, you get to swim with sharks. It's so much fun. And I'm like, a shark might, you, you, you don't, I don't know swim with sharks. sharks. Mood. Don't tell me sharks don't bite people. Because if I was a shark, I'd be like, you don't expect me to bite you, do you, bitch? Oh, Instagram. <laughs> I'll give you an Instagram photo. <laughs> and, and she was saying, oh, yeah, you know, so much fun and adventure. And I'm no. Like, my life is already so extreme mm. and you don't see the danger of life We're yeah to be honest with you guys i don't understand the people who goes uh, swim with sharks like it's not fun at all why are you swimming with sharks or with crocodiles or with playing with crocodiles or playing with dangerous animals i don't i don't understand the purpose of it it's not fun it's dangerous if you like to do dangerous things go do dangerous things but do not come and tell me like oh it was fun swimming with the sharks no fuck no it wasn't it wasn't fun no, no, no. Sitting here in a restaurant, you're talking about how you want to swim with sharks for danger and adrenaline. I get an adrenaline rush walking to my car. Yeah. I've got to get up and get out of this restaurant and get in that car without dying. I've got to tell my security team they go out in advance. I've got two behind me. I've got the ones you can see. I've got the ones you can't see. I've got to go out into the car park. My head's on a swivel. Their head's on a swivel. Valet's bringing the car. Who are those two dudes over there? Who's that police car? Are they coming for me? What's this? What's this? Okay, I'm in the car. Say... <laughs> I've had my adrenaline. I had to walk to the car. My life is dangerous enough. You're a chick. You don't see danger. You're just like, whoop the doo to yeah. the car, doo doo doo. Yay, let's go super sharks. You're very fortunate, but I'm not fortunate. I don't want extreme things. I don't want fun. I want very calm, very safe, very organized life fresh. I don't want to be going nowhere. I don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. I just want to keep making millions and millions of dollars, love my children, train hard, and be left alone. Mm. And when this is done, we're throwing a huge party in Miami for you. Maybe we'll do a party. Maybe one. When this is all Miami. Just, just one. Just one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like... Huge. I, and I see, and I do see it. And I see, like, a lot of the influencers go to these big events because everyone goes to these events and all this shit. And, and they're like, oh, when you're free, you're going to go here, you're going to go there. I'm like, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't really know. Mm. I also think fun is a massive... 
I was talking to my brother. I was saying, if you know good men, all they want to do is most of the time is work. Mo what men who are good want to do most of the time is, is work. some version of work. Training, yeah. making money, organizing their life, getting their car clean, whatever. It's a degree of work. Women love fun. Women want fun all the time. And fun is where all the haramities appear. It's where all the, the, the negative orgones appear. You're only going to get in a fight if you're going out trying to have fun. You're all like uh, drugs and, and rape charges it's and true, physical violence and assassination. Tests. This all is linked to fun. Yeah. If you want fun, you're dragging all this shit. Wasting into your life. money. We're yeah, wasting Getting money. Drunk. Yeah. If you want to just work, you can avoid a lot of bad things. And I maybe I've had enough fun. I'm not sure. But when when I was in jail, my brother and I had long conversations about what fun we would have when we were out. And then we spent five and a half months or almost six months on house arrest and we couldn't leave this house. And when they finally said we could, we sat down and said, should we leave the house? And we were like, no, you kind of get used to it. Mm. What do they say in the Shawshank Redemption? At first, you hate these walls. And then oh, you yeah. come to not mind them, and eventually you you rely on them, you depend on them. And it was talking about the guy who killed himself. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. across those six months, he's being released. Across yeah. those six months, we put together a good life. We had water slides, we had bitches, we had shisha, we had barbecue, we had the gym. Uh, we don't live in a normal house, but our compound was off the chain, bro. It's like Pablo <laughs> Escobar. And then by the time they said go out, I was like, go where? <laughs> and and here I am, five months later, and someone goes, you want to go out? I'm like, no. I, you can go. Here's the, here's the address. My team will take you. Have a great time. Go get a bunch of bitches. Go pop balls. Go do. I'm going to sit here on my computer. I'm boring. But I guess it generates millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. And millions of dollars. So I got to ask this, Andrew. So um, you were in jail at a very difficult time because you went there through Ramadan, right? Oh, that's what's hard. Fasting and, you know. That was hard, bro. You know, it, it, just a. As a Muslim, when you do Ramadan, it, you know, just doing it outside, like, even you doing it working, uh, going to work and coming back is really hard. Even to your, your mind is doing something. You're not, you occupied in your mind and doing something. But guess, you are in jail and doing nothing. And when it comes to the food, you have time into the food. You know, I don't know how how it was the food for him, but when it comes to food, he have time in and he need to keep it. I don't know at what time he was dinner, eat it, and I don't know at what time the maghrib was, uh, the sunset was there. So I don't know how it was. But to be honest with you, Ramadan, I believe it was hard for him. Ramadan is really hard. Don't take it as an easy thing, but you can do it. It's the most beautiful month in the whole year for a muslim i'm speaking for a muslim terrible time to be you know my first obviously ramadan. going yeah your first ramadan too um you converted to islam a few months prior um shout out to tam khan by the way he was a gracious host out there in, in dubai um shout out to him uh can you take us through what led you to uh converting to islam and how was that first month uh your first ramadan in prison yeah. you talk about fraternity and brotherhood like i just described and there's no bigger fraternity or brotherhood than islam that's the bottom line of it it's it doesn't matter what color you are it doesn't matter where you're from you're all brothers in islam and it truly is a beautiful feeling and i think yeah that's true i came on your show and spoke my respect for islam before i reverted i'd have respected it for a very long time and yeah. i think if you're truly a religious person and you do believe in god you're going to see the attractions of islam i've had conversations with very devout very strict christians and when I talk to them, they debate Christianity versus Islam against me, and it's quite a friendly debate. But when I say, aren't you jealous of the fact that we stick up for what we believe in and you Christians allow yourself to be mocked endlessly, I see in their eyes, they're infuriated. Everyone is jealous of the fact that Islam means what it says and says what it means unapologetically, because that's a masculine trait. Mm -hmm. It's a warrior's religion. And if you're a warrior and you want to say what you mean and mean what you say, you're going to feel massive respect for Islam. And I respected it for a long time. And I guess if you respect something long enough, you end up believing in it. And the conversion comes afterwards. And my Ramadan was in jail. I, I don't know if this is completely true. And I don't want to talk like an Islamic scholar because I'm not. But if you're at war or if you're in a particularly Stop difficult scenario, you, feel, you don't have to fast. But I yeah. decided to fast anyway and to respect it. And I got my meals and I was given my three meals a day and I would pick out the bits of food that was edible and I would cover it up with a little piece of plastic and I would sit there all day long with the plastic over my paper plate and flick the ro roaches and flies and make sure nothing touched it until, until it came time to eat. I didn't eat 
before sunrise because I didn't have food before sunrise. I could only eat once a day when the sun went down. And uh, it was quite a beautiful feeling. I read the entire, as much of the Quran as I could. I don't know if I finished the entire thing in that month, but I finished the entire thing in jail. And between reading the Quran and protecting my food, I, I felt very fulfilled during that month. Mm. It was probably one of the easiest months in jail, wow. Ramadan. I really? Felt, yeah, I felt fulfilled. I knew what I had to do. I had to pray. I had to read the Quran. I had to protect my food. I had to make sure there wasn't insects in it by the time it came to eat. I eventually got to eat it with my brother, and we sat there, and we ate it. And it was quite a fulfilling time. I was very sad when it ended. I was very, I was genuinely sad when Ramadan Yeah, that's how it Ramadan is. is. How does Ramadan it is? When my, my wife, she's not a Muslim, she's a Christian. And she did the first Ramadan yes, uh, last year with me. She did the first Ramadan. So I told her uh, Ramadan is something special. She didn't, uh, I told her in every way it's something special. Like uh, I, I, don't, I, I, I cannot explain it why it's something special. Uh, so I give her an example of called the, the bar Barakat Ramadan. It's like something, let's say for food, for example, the fridge is always full, full. The table is always full. Everything is full. During that month, everything is full. When he's gone, everything is empty. So I told her he bring his baraka and he go. He take his baraka when he when he go when he went when he goes. So she did, she doesn't understand. She did the first Ramadan. It wasn't hard. Okay, it's hard, but it wasn't like she, we did it. She did it just for support for me. So after after one week of Ramadan and. She says like it's 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 true because the table was never full. Uh, all the time we going we were going to the shop in Ramadan. I go only one time to the shop and we have the table full. I don't know. She doesn't understand. It. I don't understand it. Nobody understands. It. But it's 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 for for a Muslim. It's the most beautiful month. On, did did in Islam the year. help you stay strong in, in jail? I would open the Quran on random pages every day. I would just open it and I'd find a quote which I found applicable to the situation I was in. So I would leave it up to chance, but I guess God was trying to give me particular messages. And every single time I opened that book, there was a passage or a message on the page I randomly selected that made me feel better every single time. And the best one and my favorite one, this is my favorite in the whole Quran so far, is just because you say you believe does not mean Allah will not test you. Yeah, um, you're a believer does not mean your life gets easy. Absolutely not. Just because you just because you say you believe does not mean you will not be tested. And I saw it as a test. I actually saw the fact that I went to jail quite quickly after my reversion. Almost I was going to ask you about that. As a test. Do I really believe? And that's why I decided to respect Ramadan. Am I going to just throw it all out the window because my life's gotten hard? Or am I going to stick to what I said I believe in and show that I believe truly? And that's good, God brother. was watching and God was paying attention, as was I. And I feel very I'm fortunate to have spent that's good, brother. Jail. Do you know the story of Job in the Bible? I do, but you can tell it for the context. Similar scenario. God took everything from him? He had everything you could think of. Family, yep. cattle, house, land, carts. If they had carts back then. And God made a deal with Satan. He said, listen, if you can tempt my servant, he turns away from me, you can have him. But I guarantee you, he won't turn from me. You would take everything away. So... Satan came down to earth, took away his family. They all died. Cattle, all gone. Land, house, gone. He had sores. He was stricken to the, to the ground, couldn't walk, could barely talk, was in terrible shape. But he never forsake, forsake God the whole time. And lo and behold, God said, see my servant? Never turned away from me. Bless him 10 times over. So the struggle that we go through every day in life is tough. But if you stand firm in what you believe, like what Andrew did, you're rewarded 10 times over. Yeah, and I mean, we can talk about it religiously, but it's also, yeah. we because it's fresh and fit, let's apply it to a relationship scenario. Yeah. A girl loves you, of course. She loves you when she's going to the restaurants and you're not in jail and you're taking care of her and her rent is paid and you're buying her handbags and you're entertaining her and you're spending time with her and everything's fun and great. Of course she loves you. But does she really love you? When it ends. You find out if she really loves you, just like you find out if Job really believed when the hard times come. And then you're going to see who really loves you and who doesn't. That's when you're going to learn a lot about people. And you can apply that to nearly all. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Trump, uh, I saw a video of Trump. He said in uh, one, uh, his oldest video, who was young back in the day. I saw it on TikTok. Not on TikTok. I don't scroll on TikTok. Sorry, I saw it on a, on a video. It passed me on YouTube, like a short video. And he says, like, sometimes I just want to get broke to see 
who really stick by me just i want to go broke to see uh, who really stick by me and he says there is a lot of people i help them when when i get uh, when he get bankrupt um they just turn they he said that they didn't care about it at all i reached for them but they didn't care even though i helped them and they say uh, if now that um the future if i have the opportunity i'm going to pay it back so i believe i don't know what who who he was speaking about who but that's what he said exactly i want to get just sometimes you just want to get broke to see who who stick by you and when you are broke like not broke but anyway when you have no nothing no money and stuff like this because uh being broke it's fine i'm not saying it's not fine being broke it's fine but you cannot stay broke that, that's what i'm saying you cannot stay broke because if you work for it you can have all the money that you want it's just you can you can do the work it take you five years i don't know how much it is going to take but uh, i'm not i'm not planning to stay broke all my life anyway i'm not planning to stay without no with no money all my life like yeah uh, for the moment i have no idea guys <laughs> i lost my idea so we're going to speak it when it come back he really loves you just like you find out if job really believed when the hard times come and then you're going to see who really loves you and who doesn't that's when you're going to learn a lot about people and you can apply that to nearly all scenarios on earth and i see that all the time i i, I see i don't use tiktok at all but occasionally i'm unfortunate enough on twitter you catch these couple goal tiktoks strays yeah, yeah, yeah and and it's kind of embarrassing for well not kind of i apologize it's not often i'm wrong but i was wrong there and i want to make an apology to the world it's very embarrassing it's not kind of it's very embarrassing for the man these couple goal tiktoks it's it's pathetic and the reason yeah. it's so pathetic because you know it's her idea too. of course it's her idea and she's gay. publicly it's so gay and she's publicly cucking him and <sighs> she's making him act a particular way and she's showing the world that she has her man bitch whipped and the whole thing's the whole thing's embarrassing but i sit there and it's like oh a couple goals and they're in the maldives and they're hugging and they're holding hands and they're running and they're smiling and i sit and look at this shit and i say if he went to jail she'd be fucking someone else in 4.3 days a couple goals couple goals it's bollocks there is no couple and there is no love in the good times i mean yeah okay girls love you when things are good of course they do but it doesn't mean anything you think uh, maybe m m not maybe i've been around the block i'm not stupid when i'm on my private jet and the 10 out of 10 beauty queen goes i love you duh when constructed systems on the planet because they're constructed by humans i don't trust the medical organization or the judicial system i don't trust the financial system i don't i don't believe in the matrix i don't believe in any of it so then the only faith and trust you can have in it is god and god wants you to be loyal to the brothers who ride beside you that's what god wants so yeah. to me it's sure. easy to follow god's law to me i don't care if it gets me in judicial trouble amongst the humans here on earth if i know i'm doing what god wants me to do because he's all powerful and all-knowing mm -hmm. so there that's my answer and that's why i'm always going to choose it if you decide not to do that and decide to again then have faith in humans and humanity you're making a mistake because humans are extremely fallible they're fallible people who are going to build fallible systems and it doesn't matter what's written in a book it doesn't matter how educated your lawyer is it doesn't matter it's all fallible from head to toe and problems are going to come from that when you're looking for justice and fairness because only god can do that and he works in mysterious ways but i know if i stick by my brothers and stick to my word and say what i mean and mean what i say and refuse to lead any of my fans down a negative path that i will be monumentally rewarded in the end including if he throws me back in jail then he knew he knows things i don't know and he knows i need that jail sentence so i will take it graciously sir thank you and i will go and do it yo andrew real quick so last time i came here i was totally out of shape what do you think now you're getting better fresh but if you lived with me Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave him in Romania with you then. Well, oh we, man! We, we train every day, no <laughs> days off, endless, and we wouldn't let you not train. You get dragged in there. Well, quick tip, guys. We're gonna spar tomorrow. Uh, yeah, Myron and uh, Andrew. No, no, no you no. are. You are as well. And, and yeah, Myron and Andrew. Yeah. No, you are, bro. Because you, you beat him in Super Smash Bros. Now he, it's time Super Smash Bros. <laughs> in real life. That's right. He beat me in Smash Bros. And so now we're gonna do it in real Isn't life. Isn't it funny? We were playing the game, right? He was like, "Yo, I'm gonna beat you up in real life." So I said, like, "Real life? No, no, it's a game. It's a game." <laughs> Please chill, chill, chill. It's a game. Well, no game to me. <laughs> oh my god. Um, uh, here's some chats here if you want to. Yeah, I, I gotta. While you pull up the quote, the thing I got a question for you, Andrew. Andrew, I gotta say this, man. Obviously, you know you you're responsible for having a bunch of young men, young boys walking around saying, "What color is your Bugatti?" and realizing that the world they can do more in the world, right? And one of the places that has a big fucking problem with your message of guys getting out there and fucking becoming better is the UK. What the fuck? 
is their infatuation, which you haven't lived there in well over a decade. Mm. Like, what is their problem? With, like, why are they so fucking hell-bent, man, on going after you? Well, Russell Brand as well. They wrote a whole letter to fucking Rumble, yeah. right? Shout-out to Chris for standing 10 toes down, saying no, asking, oh, is he monetized on your platform? Yeah. Like, yeah, the UK what's their problem? I think the UK is coming for me next. I think they're going to launch a case on me. I think they're going to attempt to arrest me. The UK is draconian. It's out of control. They've just entered recession today. It's a failed society where crime rates oh, are out of control and stabbing are out of control and they no longer have a border and people are just arriving by boat and there's acid attacks. It's the acid attack capital of Europe. You can walk down the street and get acid thrown in your face and be permanently disfigured for life. Wow. They should have bigger things to worry about. But I guess their primary objective is instead of trying to fix our problems, which we don't believe we can do, let's kill the person who highlights the problems. Let's fix the man who tells the truth. Yeah. We have all of these problems in our society, but instead of fixing them, let's instead attack the person who highlights them because that makes them less prevalent to the populace. So let's get rid of Andrew because he tells the truth about what's happening in England, and then maybe we'll get away with this scam a little bit longer. And that's why they've come up with the idea they have, and that's why, as we speak, right now the British government is trying to put me in jail. I'm pretty sure of that. And... What can I do? Once again, I can shut up and believe in the justice of the judicial system of the United Kingdom, or I can believe in God and tell the truth and say the things I know are true and trust him to look after me. And I'm going to have to do that as opposed to trusting fallible humans because I don't believe in them. And they tried already to do something and they failed. Uh, we're coming at a case. They took all your shit. Well, this is back, what, 2013? Yeah, yeah a long time ago, yeah. A long time ago, they took all your stuff and they failed. So it's like, what the fuck, man? Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's just wild. And you haven't lived there, so it's just amazing to me how they're they, going after someone that doesn't even live there anymore just because you're critical of their government that's right and they have they seem to have endless money for bombing children and endless money for war and endless money to try and put the people who highlight these things in jail but they don't have money to feed anyone or fix the crime epidemic or lower anyone's taxes or fix the energy crisis or make sure the old people don't freeze to death no they only have money to try and put the people who highlight these things in jail mm. and it goes to show like i said earlier your ability to speak freely is directly correlated to your insignificance People sit and say, oh, it feels like a free country. I say what I want because no one listens to you. There was a as guy. As soon as people start listening to you, you're going to learn very quickly. You cannot say what you want. There was a guy. We heard about him recently in the UK that said a woman, a woman was fat. He said his lady was fat. I think, uh, was, was it on camera? Anyhow, he got arrested for that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, he said she was a fat lesbian. There we go. She was just fat. That's crazy, yeah. bro. Yeah. He got arrested. Yeah. And I, that's actually such an interesting one because surely you'd be able to. I don't know. I'd love to see that court case mm. because I don't know. I don't know how he defended himself, but I would have walked in there with her BMI. <laughs> <laughs> I would have walked in there and said, I stated an no. objective truth. Yeah. Just like you can call me tall and brown and sexy and funny and charismatic and interesting and rich and handsome with a long Johnson. You can do all those things. That's fine. I called her fat because this is her BMI. She is here scientifically clinically obese. I wouldn't say sorry. I wouldn't say I shouldn't have said it. I'll say I just pointed out the obvious. The sky is blue. She's fat. <laughs> yeah. And I would have gone to fucking jail. But I, I don't know how he defended himself. That's how I would have defended myself. Your Honor, she is obese. She is fat, Your Honor. Case just, God, the defense rests its case. Give her a cake and see how long it lasts. I would say, Your Honor, uh, can you tell me what she is then? Because I'm confused. Call that skinny? <laughs> yeah. But, then, but once again, mm. if... I'll ask a, a pertinent and important question. If a woman called a man fat, Ooh. would she go to jail? No. Would she be arrested? Not and the answer is no, because we live in a matriarchy. A big no. And when you live in a matriarchy, the number one thing you can do in an attempt to keep the power of the matriarchy is to convince the world that you live in a patriarchy. So they just say the <laughs> absolute opposite. We live in a matriarchy and they sit and cry all day about the fact that we live in a patriarchy because it makes people afraid to highlight how matriarchal society is. Yeah. They do that on purpose because you're instantly attacked for being a patriarchal person. So they'll sit and say, we live in a patriarchy, men have all the power. How do we have all the power? Name a single law that benefits men. Name one. We don't have any power that a woman doesn't have now in the world today. Women actually have mo nearly all of the control. They do. And... Then they want to come along, and I've said this on Fresh and Fit shows before, when they say, well, men make more money. False. Hmm. Yeah, a yeah. very small percentage of men make more money. Yeah. The average man does not make more money. The average man works hard carrying trash in the rain to try and get a wife to be loyal to him so he can raise his family and pay the bills. The average man does not have millions and millions of dollars. And they have once again conflated a few rich elite men with all men. And it's part of the psyop they're doing on the populace and psyop they're doing on the females. So females think they're oppressed and living in some kind of patriarchal society. Find a society on earth outside of the West where you're more free.
go no. for it. If it's so bad, I, I argue women have never been more free than they are in the West, ever. And I this, love asking them this question. Name one right or privilege that men have that you don't hmm. outside of men being able to have sex without being judged, and they can't name shit. They literally can't name shit because and, they get, and, and judged. Yeah. And when you say judged, we're not judged by the law. So yeah. again, the law is on their side all fine. We're judged by God. Yeah. And they know that because God's the only true judge on earth. But the law is not going to tell a woman not to be a hoe. She's yeah. allowed to be a hoe. Yeah. There's yeah. no law against it. Yeah. Only God judges them and other women judge them and men judge them. But about at length about how a woman can be promiscuous and decide to destroy men's life retrospectively because so it's got in the Another internet. reason why promiscuous women do this, which is why I say I avoid them so heavily, a promiscuous woman, instead of admitting she was promiscuous and admitting the mistakes she made and living with the sin of being promiscuous, would rather pretend she didn't want to do it or was forced or was tricked. Because then she gets to pass blame and remove all self-accountability. If you... I'll make up a hypothetical scenario. Like one of these fucking girls on this case, which I won't even go into it. Yeah, let's make up a hypothetical scenario. Let's imagine you're a rich billionaire and you own a global wrestling organization. And let's <laughs> imagine you have a girl who works for you, who flies around on private jets and lives a good life and gets presents and spends millions of dollars. And you're into a kink where she sleeps with other guys and other girls in front of you, whatever. And she does it all and enjoys it for years because the money's rolling in. Then the relationship ends and you break her heart because you don't want to be with her anymore. She has two choices. She can sit there and say, I was a slut for money. I decided to do X amount of things because I wanted the money and the lifestyle. And I guess to a degree, I sold my soul and sold my pussy for money because I was enjoying this Absolutely. lifestyle. Or They don't show her text messages. Or she could say, I was tricked. I didn't want to. He made me. Yeah. I was human trafficked. And it removes all of her responsibility without consequence. If you could remove all of your responsibility for the actions you've made without consequence, whether you are male or female, you will do that. Let me give you an example. If you get a bank loan and you spend that loan irresponsibly and you cannot afford to repay it, and you can go into the bank and say, you tricked me, you made me take the loan, I don't want to pay it, and they had to write it off and let you get away with it, name a person who wouldn't. Yeah. So women yeah. can now, promiscuous women, can now blame their promiscuity on men. They can take all of their own decisions and outsource them towards some degree of manipulation, either manipulation through being mean to you, manipulation through being nice to you, whatever. It doesn't matter yeah. if the guy's mean or nice, you're manipulative. Seriously. If you talk to her, you manipulate her somehow. Yeah. And they're just going to try and take all of their own personal decisions blame on a man so they can absolve themselves of the responsibility of their actions. So when a man says to him, why did you have sex with so many men and do all those things? Oh, I was tricked. <laughs> I was tricked. No, you weren't. They just don't want us to own up and take responsibility for anything. That's all this is, and they can do it without consequence, and the only people who suffer are the men who dealt with them, which is why I won't go anywhere near a promiscuous woman ever, 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 ever. Because when, when she gets a new boyfriend, which will happen, and her new boyfriend finds out she was my ex, he's going to feel insecure. They're going to watch Taken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to feel insecure. She's going to text you. And she's gonna be like, he's going to be like, why were you with him? Oh, he's a piece of shit. He's, he's a human trafficker. Why are you with him? And instead of sitting there saying, I was with him because he's more successful than you and he's a better man than you and I'd still be with him if he didn't dump me. She can't do that because she'll lose her current man paying her rent. So instead she'll say, oh, well, I didn't, you know, he tricked me. He forked me. I, I was with him and he was buying me things and I, I felt trapped. And she'll just make up shits because then it's not her fault. Yeah. And she'll just absolve responsibility. Scary the whole thing's world. a clown show. And then who gets stuck with the garbage? Me. So that's why I refuse. Bro, these women don't deserve me. They don't deserve me. I do all the work in bed anyway. Fuck you. I don't, you don't deserve me. You don't deserve the dick I'll give you. Because just, it's just a headache that I have to think about forever. If I sleep with a woman today, I've got to think for the rest of my human years if she's going to be upset by the fact that her new boyfriend found out he's inferior to me. I don't yeah. need that garbage in my life. How about I just don't fuck any of you? Sorry, ladies. I'm not going to fuck any of you. Stop sending me emails. Stop <laughs> begging. Because I get it endlessly, hundreds a day. I'm not going to fuck any of you. So just stop. Go away. Isn't it kind of crazy when a girl approaches you first, but, like, you know what could be possible when she's coming to you? Like, it's just kind of like, what do you want from me? Well, it's scary if a girl approaches you first because that means she approaches men. Yeah. If she approaches men, we know how that goes. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, it could be very, very <laughs> problematic. Oh, we know how that ends. I mean, oh, she's, she's had it. It's innocence and inexperience in a woman that's attractive to a man. Yeah. I want to be, I'll tell you something, bro. I want to be the first man to take a woman 
to a beautiful location on a private jet. Facts. I want to be the first man to put her in a McLaren or a Lamborghini. I want to be the first man Facts. to show her so many things. I don't care how beautiful you are. If I see on your Insta you've been on a jet before, I lose, I instant lose interest. Yeah. You've Some dude has shown you so much, and now I have to show you the same or more, and you've seen all. Experience in a woman is so unattractive. Yeah. That's, that's not what we want. Agreed. And again, you can call me misogynist. You can call me names. I'm just talking the truth. You can ask any man out there. Do you want an experienced or inexperienced woman? You say, I want a woman who I can be the first one to show her things. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't make you a bad person. That means, in fact, you want to be her gateway to the world. You want to provide. You want to give her things. You want to be a good person to her. You want to make her smile. You want to make her laugh. It's hard to make her smile with a fucking Happy Meal. She's been on jets. That's true. So this is, this is the reality. You want that bar to be as low as possible. Why wouldn't you? Your life's hard enough. You're a man. You're out here working. You're trying to pay the bills. you got a difficult life. Now you want to make your woman smile. You don't want that bar to be so high that you need a private plane and a the Hope Diamond and take her to Maldives for her to crack a, a, a smile. No, you want her to smile over the simple things, the small things. You want an experience in a woman. There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone understands that. Every culture on earth understands that. There's not a culture on the planet that respects promiscuous women. Name one. There's not a single one. But if you say it in the West, you're somehow deemed misogynistic. It's, but it's deliberate. It's a psyop. This is done on purpose by the Matrix, by the people in charge, because they're trying to demasculinize us at every level. And one of the most masculine instincts you can have is to protect and provide for your woman. If they take that away from you, what do you even have left? If you can't find a woman you can protect and provide for and feel protective over and she obeys you and you get to be the king of your castle, you could have your own tiny little apartment, but at least it's yours. And you're the man in that apartment. And she makes your dinner and she loves you very much and you pay her bills and you're a happy team and you work together. No, they take that away from you at the base level. They destroy the nucleus of the cell. There's a lot of men watching this right now whose woman will not go and get them a drink. They can't say, I'm watching something. Can you get me a drink? You're paying the rent, G. You're paying the rent. She yeah. won't even go get you a drink. The whole thing's lopsided. It's all destroyed. And it, they'll play this clip in court saying he thinks women should fetch him a drink. Yeah, I think if I'm paying the bills and I'm driving around in Ferraris and I'm giving her presents and she's flying on private jets and she's physically safe because of me. If anyone breaks in the house, I'll die to defend her. I do think she should get me a lemon water if I'm busy working, paying our bills. Correct. <laughs> Thank Take you. Take me to jail. Like, what, what you can't have standards, man. What planet are we living on where that puts a man in jail? It's incredible how men can't have standards, man. You can't it's have wild. standards. It's absolutely wild. Another thing, too, is like they'll sit there, right? Because I've said this when it comes to this whole Me Too bullshit, right, which really infuriates me. You got to pick one. It's either women are bumbling idiots that can't make their own decisions, and we need a man over them at all times, right, to give them the ability to make consent. Or they're r adults that are able to make their own decisions, and they have all the legal rights and privileges that men do, which they do, by the way, and they should be able to deal with the consequences of their actions. But no, we sit there and tell them, you can be hoes, you can do whatever you want, you can make money, you can become successful, you have the world in your fingertips, but at the same time, we're not going to go ahead and give you the responsibility to make dealing with the consequences of your own fucking actions. And that's where we are now. It's scary. Yeah. They can pick and choose when they want to be an adult. It's it, Completely. It's hypocritical. Completely right. Because if they're not capable of making their own decisions and living with the responsibilities of those actions, well, then they should obey their fathers until they get a man, they should obey their man. <laughs> yeah. And if they're going to ignore their fathers and ignore their man and make all their own decisions, and then as soon as a decision has consequences that they did not foresee, the most interesting thing about that is that these foreseeable con these uh, these consequences are very foreseeable. Oh yeah, they're not complicated conclusions. It's yeah. cause and effect. But they'll ignore them, pretend they don't see. Hmm. I didn't see the effects that would be would would come to the tarnishing of my reputation if I did porn. I didn't expect. <laughs> I didn't yeah. expect this. I was manipulated and tricked because they want to absolve themselves of responsibility. You either should be obeying your fathers and obeying your man, or you should be a sentient being that makes his own decisions and live with the responsibilities of those decisions like a man does. Well, as a man, we are responsible for the consequences of every action we undertake. Everything we do, whether good or bad, is our fault. If I get a Ferrari on the drive, I did it. If I end up in jail or dead, I probably made a mistake somewhere, or I will at least pretend I did so I can learn. I have nothing to say about anything he said uh, in this second part, only the, uh, the, the few things he said. So I'm going to want to talk once again about the store, guys, and make sure to check it. Uh, to
As I said guys this is a store make sure to check it I have cool new uh, cool design uh, and I'm dropping every day new design as you see the Meowgistic is my it's not my favorite but I like it it's a hippie cat my favorite is the, the wolf the hunter fearless yeah and you can see it from back from front and this one I put it only in the back in the in the front and it's uh, for the woman studying there is a reflection for it as you can see I'm dropping every day uh, design you may find something you really like freedom yeah like this one i lost my boo see this one is also i i like it but my favorite one is also this one the dream catcher the fox between the four the wolf and the fox i i pretty enjoy them both uh this is my favorite design so far the fox and this one yeah and i have we have cool design also so you can check dark dark vador yeah the cats yeah you can check be simple be creative seek so yeah make sure to check and uh to purchase something from here guys as a support for us i really appreciate it guys and if you want to see me doing more reaction make sure to purchase something from here guys see ya thank you